YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back with an updated NFL mock draft just after week 15. So the first mock draft with the Jacksonville Jaguars with the first overall pick. The Jets now in that two slot. So they kind of blew it a little bit. Uh, yeah, we're using the current order here heading into week 16. Not predicting anything with this order, but we are predicting uh, the NFL draft with the current order here. So we'll break down the first round here. Always updating these mocks. We got full NFL coverage in season, even in the offseason with free agency and NFL draft coverage. So give us a follow. So or subscribe to the channel, smash that like button. We much appreciate it. Follow us on Twitter, constant NFL talk, college football talk, NFL draft talk, talking during live games, the must follow. Link down below for that. We have an Instagram podcast and Patreon as well. And then check out that side of the app. There's a link down below for that. Uh, you debate football and you can win Amazon gift cards. Pretty cool. I mentioned that Patreon, a bunch of extra content on there, weekly NFL content and college football content, uh, score predictions, bets of the week for NFL college football, NFL playoff predictions, a lot more going on there. Let's go to the mock draft. Again, current order. The Jaguars are at the top now, and I got them taking Trevor Lawrence. Pretty obvious. So the week where Trevor Lawrence kind of made himself, I mean, for most of us, including myself, he was a pretty clear-cut one. But I think he really guaranteed that this, you know, this past week against uh, Notre Dame. But also thrown in there, Justin Fields didn't have the best outing there in a in more of a defensive test. But uh, so I, I think the gap between Lawrence and Fields is quite large at the moment. Jaguars go Trevor Lawrence. They got some weapons out there. They got some weapons, um, you know, to help them out. Maybe they need to build a little more of the offensive line, but mainly on the defense there to finish off that complete team. The Jets, I, I did end up going with Zach Wilson from BYU. Um, and Justin Fields very well can go on the spot. He's very talented. Um, you know, could use his legs. He has a strong arm downfield. Very good throw on the sideline. You know, some of those tough throws to the sideline, he's got enough velocity on the ball uh, and very accurate. I went with Zach Wilson, though, because I do think Justin Fields' weakness, you know, the, the, the negative right now that he needs to work on is he holds the ball for too long. Holds the ball. You know, it takes time to, to scan the field. Um, you know, some there's some trap coverages that can give them some issues. And, um, you know, those zone coverages in the NFL are, are tough to tough to read. Got one thing going from college to the NFL. Um, so, and yeah, Justin, you look at Justin Fields' game against Northwestern, they, they had – it's one game. You know, I know you can't overreact to one game. I normally – you know, I, I don't do that. Uh, but th this was a pretty interesting one because they had to take the ball, Ohio State, that is out of Justin Fields' hands to win the game and run the ball. And, yeah, it was a smart thing to do. Running was working. I was going to win the game. That's understandable, but that's a knock on Justin Fields. If the ball remained in Justin Fields' hands, Northwestern was going to win the Big Ten Championship. So that that's alarming. That's a little. I know it's one game. It's a little alarming. Uh, but Darnold has some of the same issues, holding the ball for too long. You know, not decide. You know, can't decide where to go quick enough. Zach Wilson's, you know, able to get the ball out real fast, and he has maybe the strongest arm in the draft. So the Jets go that route. Will depend on who their coaching staff is. Um, you know, we'll see in the off season. Uh, the Bengals stick with Penny Sewell. Uh, the tackle class is getting better. There's a lot of guys rising up the boards here, so it's making things interesting. But Penny Sewell would be, I think, right away a Pro Bowl guard. Worst case scenario, he's going to be a future Pro Bowl tackle. Exactly what the Bengals need in there. I mean, they can use help anywhere. So Justin Fields falls at the Panthers. The Panthers are second half of the season. Got pretty damn cold there. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater started the year off pretty good, but he went cold. Um, just not enough out of him. Not enough big playability. I mean, he uh, with his legs, he can make some big plays. But So the fourth pick, the Panthers definitely take the shot on Justin Fields and continue to grow that team there. Drafted all defense last year. So uh, they'll look to add a big piece to the offense like this, but they actually may – you know, this this pick like Fields can make that offense uh, very dangerous just with that. So um, they could go back to defense after that. Falcons on with Kyle Pitts. I know they have Hayden Hurst. He's playing pretty well. Next year will probably be his last year with the Falcons, perhaps, uh, unless they can get him back cheap. You know, I don't know if they want to spend big money. But you can use Pitts and Hayden Hurst. Pitts, is, Pitts might be the best tight end prospect we've we've seen really ever. I mean, you see him line, in line, slot, outside. I mean, He's a receiver and a tight end. He's both. You know, he's Darren Waller with a lot more upside. And it's just a mismatch nightmare, a game plan nightmare. You throw him in there with Hayden Hurst with – I like him with Calvin Ridley because Calvin Ridley can move around a bit too. You can put Pitts outside really in the slot. You know, you can move him around for the future. Obviously, you have Julio Jones too. But it's, this is a bright, 
future with a guy like Kyle Pitts. And you could go a quarterback. You know, I, I think they can't ignore quarterback. Um, you know, because Matt Ryan's not playing well right now, and he's definitely not the future. But that doesn't mean force it. To me, Kyle Pitts is going to be a top five player in his draft. He's going to be the best player available compared to a quarterback here, and then they can really benefit from him. So. Uh, well worth the fifth overall pick. And the Dolphins go to receiver that I'm very high on, Devontae Smith, who would be my Heisman pick right now. Receiver from Alabama. I mean, he's having one. You know, last year I was saying Jamar Chase, that might have been one of the best seasons I've seen from receiver. Now Devontae Smith's doing it right now this year. Uh, you, another guy you can put in slot, put outside. Tremendous speed, tremendous hands, can catch any ball, can run any route. So so quick, so twitchy, so hard to guard. Uh, definitely recognizes his own coverages, can read them. Uh, he's going to be good. You know, you look at the impact Justin Jefferson's making. He's a plug-and-play guy. He can read zone coverage. He can line up inside, outside. Really good with his footwork. Got speed. You know, it's all. You know, it's not really. I'm not going to compare the two, but it's all the same things that translate right away to the NFL. Devontae Smith will make an instant impact in the NFL. Get Tua his his receiver. They definitely need another number one receiver. The receivers are taking over the NFL right now. They're instant impact, especially guys like this. I like Devontae Smith. He's going to be a top five player on my board. Uh, Eagles could go Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase will also be top five on my board. I love these receivers. Uh, Jamar Chase, an excellent year last year. They could go Jamar Chase. That linebacker unit is the worst in football, though. Mike Parsons is a legit prospect. Can you know contribute in any way for an off-the-ball linebacker. You can get after the quarterback if he wants to. He can you know drop back in coverage. You know when the Eagles defense when they struggle. You know looking at the Cardinals game I just having Week 15. You know linebacker unit is a big. You know, part of that, you know, looking at their front, their actual defensive front, it looks like it should be one of the best in football. You know, they probably should have the best front seven in football. You look at the linebackers, it's nowhere near the best because of the linebackers. So Parsons would be a pretty good pick. Chase is definitely an option here. Uh, the receivers are starting to look a little better. Jalen Rager's got some upside. You know, everyone's looking better with Jalen Hurts, so that's fantastic. Uh, Patrick Sertan for, for the Cowboys there, cornerback from Alabama. Looks like a sure thing. You know, I'm always hesitant about taking corners in the top ten because um, – I think there's just more important positions today's NFL. But um, if you can get a solid duo, then that really increases the value of the cornerback position, taking one of the top ten. And getting the Alabama duo, I'm a big Trevon Diggs fan, excited about his future. And then getting the better prospect here and Patrick Sertan, you know, Sertan, that's gonna that'd be fantastic. Um he's he, he's he's really good. You know, even in even in like the, you know, look at the SEC championship game, the Florida game, you have a touchdown there. Uh, somewhat towards the end, but I, I take away positives from even the negative plays, if that makes sense. Look at that play, uh, press man, uh, nice, nice one hand jab. I mean, he can do, he can get a little more effect out of that, a little more impact out of that. But um, his, his, you know, quickness and the ability to go from zero to sixty to stay with the receiver this is perfect coverage. Perfect coverage. Somehow he lost sight of the ball, which isn't a good thing. But I, I marked that down as kind of a fluky thing on that part. The coverage was outstanding. Um, he's just really good with. You know, keeping a hand without interfering on a receiver and uh, making a play on the ball, getting his eyes turned, keeping keeping a read on the quarterback. So he should be the first corner taken. I like a lot of these corners, though. The first three corners, including him. Cowboys pair of the Alabama corners. Uh, next group of picks, Christian Darasaw from Virginia Tech is uh, rising upwards. He uh, he opted out, and after that, you know, it's there's been, you know, I think he's getting reviews from the league that, you know, he's going to go – uh, a lot higher than expected, but he's had a really good year, really highly graded offensive tackle, pretty athletic. The Chargers offensive line is playing okay right now. It's kind of hit or miss sometimes. They want to make sure their they're key franchise piece and a good one, and Justin Herbert is protected. They could definitely use another tackle to fit that. I think an athletic one um, you know, here is it would be fantastic. So he's going to go a lot earlier than people originally expected. He had a really good season. So the Chargers – grab him at nine, then they can kind of can work on defense after that. Um, there, the rest of the draft, the offseason, you know, free and obviously before. The Giants go Jamar Chase. Maybe not the biggest need. You know, Golden Tate's not going to be around forever. Um, so they definitely need someone else. You know, I like Slayton a lot. There's times where he kind of disappears, though. Same with Sterling Shepard. These guys are good, but Jamar Chase would be their number one right away. You know, even if Tate's still there, whoever it is, Jamar Chase is that good. It's just too good to pass. He's easily better than the 10th player in the draft and looking out for their future here. And it's it's kind of that guy that they don't really have. Golden Tate sometimes comes up and makes a crazy catch, but a guy that, you know, if Daniel Jones kind of needs to throw the make that kind of interesting decision, you know, Chase could be that guy. They could go quarterback, and they like Daniel Jones, though, but – in, debatable. They maybe should go quarterback here with a couple guys left, but Chase is too good to pass. The Lions go Trey Lance, quarterback from North Dakota State. Could go earlier than this. Some people are still talking about him, even close to top five. Uh, not the biggest sample size. Last year was great. Was very careful with the ball. Very good runner. Very strong runner. 
Um, you know, maybe like more of a prime Cam Newton potential here. Uh, but yeah, the Lions, they need almost everything. Um, you know, I mean, I like Swift for the future. I like Gaudet as the number one. I mean, Marvin Jones is pretty good too, but how long is he going to be there? Uh, then you look at there's some pieces on the offensive line. Decker I like a lot, obviously. Um, Akuda is a guy for the future on the defense. Maybe maybe Tracy Walker as well, but they need a lot. They need a lot, and if you have the ability to get a quarterback to start there, then uh, that'd be fantastic. I don't know if Stafford could be traded. They could hang on to him. Even if they do hang on to him, they still could be in the market for the quarterback of the future. Uh, the Niners are a quarterback, too. I think they'll like Kyle Trask. I think I think Shanahan will like Kyle Trask a lot. Um, you know, he has that strong arm, that, you know, that downfield, a big play ability that they kind of need more of while he can handle kind of their, their, their system as well. You know, you wish there was a little more quickness to him, ability to just to take off, you know, because that's kind of taken over in today's NFL. But the downfield ball, the arm strength, the accuracy, um, the pocket presence and, and footwork, all really good. And that has been improved in by an insane amount in less than a year, which is rare as can be, rare as can be. I think Shanahan will like that. I think he'll like to work with him. And I don't think Garoppolo is going to be gone. Some people think so. It's possible because they can cut him and save a lot of money. It's not a bad contract from here on out. But they right now, if they believe, they believe and they should, if they had Garoppolo, they'd be a playoff team. And there's other teams with injuries as well that could be a playoff team if this, if that. But uh, they're gonna, I think they're gonna keep Garoppolo, and they have the ability to cut him after this next year. But with that, they they are definitely looking out for the future here. And Trask is a guy that they will like to bring in to compete with Garoppolo and be the franchise quarterback of the future. Broncos go Caleb Farley. I like Caleb Farley a lot. Uh, the combination of length, athleticism, physicality. Has familiar, he's familiar with uh, man coverage, which is tough to do. One of the toughest things to do in football for cornerbacks, for sure. Uh, and he's a former receiver turned corner on top of all that. All that checks a lot of boxes. There, there are gonna be, there's going to be teams that have Farley ahead of Sertan there because of those reasons. That's just kind of like eye-popping uh, to, to defensive coaches, and they'll fall in love with a guy like that. He's good. He's good. Uh, the Broncos – uh, they're mainly bad at corner because of injuries, but they definitely need a guy for the future as well. Farley can definitely help that out there, make that defense that much better when you get a corner like that. Vikings go Rashawn Slater. This is a, this is a really good scenario for the Vikings. I had Slater dropping a little bit. Maybe Darsaw creeping up helps that. Uh, but Slater, I'm confident with him at pretty much any spot in the offensive line, which the Vikings could use. They need more of that guard right now. Reef is probably okay for one more year, but potentially can, can take over that tackle spot. So we're looking at a guard and a tackle here. Um, so either replacing Dozier or replacing Reef here. And uh, he's definitely worth the pick. You know, he's definitely worth the pick. Uh, people raving about him. He he's. It sounds like he's going to go earlier than once we what that we once thought, which was kind of back into the first. Now in the beginning, uh, Patriots. I'm. I get the feeling the Patriots are going to make their quarterback move in the in the free agency, which is before before the draft, obviously. So they, they get a freaky receiver here, Jalen Waddle. Did get a hurt. Uh, I don't know if it was as major. You know, it, was, it wasn't good, but uh, it wasn't as major. So I'm not really worried about it. But he, he's kind of a do-it-all guy. He's Henry Ruggs, but but better. You know, Henry Ruggs is kind of one-dimensional. He's crazy speed. He's going to get better. Waddle has that deep ball ability because of his speed, but because of the ability to attack the ball better than Ruggs. But he's he's much better at the underneath than your typical, you know, regular routes here. So Waddle is the better prospect. Patriots need a guy like this. Edelman. Uh, barely played this year, but he did drop the ball an insane amount, and he's he's definitely aging. Other receivers are solid to have. Remember, you need need you need multiple number ones. So I think the Patriots solve their quarterback situation in free agency, whether it's a draft or a signing, uh, because they're done messing around with guys. They got to grow, figure out. You know, they want to get back in there and win. Remember, they're going to get a lot of guys back that opted out, so that's going to help a ton to help them win now. But they're going to need a guy, you know, a quarterback. They could go Mac Jones, uh, but Waddle will help that. I think that's the, the route they go. The Bears go Mac Jones. Mac Jones, from what I've heard, the NFL, people within you know NFL teams, NFL organizations are saying, telling the media that Mac Jones is going way higher than the media is saying. And I think a lot of us have been starting to sneak him in the first round because I kind of got that feeling. Now we're kind of hearing it. It sounds like from what they've been saying, he's going to go in the top 10 even. It was hard for me to squeeze him up there. But he is proved he's he's good. He's really good this year. I, I do worry about him against NFL pressure. Um, it's going to be a lot different for him. But he he's quick at the, you know sizing plays there. You know breaking him down, making the throw pretty accurate. Uh, and, and he's he's not really a, a, that athletic, but he, he's a little he's a little sneaky athletic at times too. And the bear what the Bears are doing right now. 
they almost changed their scheme at the moment, and they may keep this coaching staff and kind of roll with that scheme, see how it works, running a lot more play action. I think Matt Jones would thrive. I think it'll be an upgrade. Uh, and they're all the Bears are. They're, it's obvious they're looking for the quarterback of the future. So uh, I don't know if he would get past this point based on what we're hearing here. I, I don't think he would. Um, we'll see how he finishes out the year in the college football playoff. But that's what I have the Bears going. Uh, their offensive line is starting to pick it up a little bit. Uh, so maybe some more promise there. We'll see what they do with Allen Robinson. Uh, yeah, they're still looking out for the quarterback. We know that. Maybe maybe a trade up to get a better quarterback, perhaps. Uh, next, Quiddy Pay drop. A lot of these edge rushers dropping a little bit, which is tough to see because the sure thing edge rushers, you know, the really good ones in each draft class, they go in the top ten, top fifteen at the worst because there's a lack of them in every draft, and then we see a big gap, and that's why a lot of them don't really work out. So it is weird seeing some of these edge rushers drop a little bit, but there's just other talent is so good. Quiddy Pay, he's a beast. I like him as a 4-3 and The Raiders will like him. You know, they got guy. You want to like the Raiders' pass rush. You want to like it. Max Crosby's really good. Cleveland Farrell, uh, still young, a lot of potential. He was a top pick for a reason. Had a big game against the Jets a couple weeks ago. Uh, but they're just not getting enough pressure. And the secondary looks pretty bad right now. But they got so many young guys. You know, Damon Arnett, they just drafted in the first round. Trayvon Mullen was a top pick for them. Somewhat of a top pick for them, you know, a couple years ago. Jonathan Abram they like a lot. You know, so I don't know if they'll really address that once again. You know, they'll kind of let those guys grow. You know, what's the fastest way to success on defense is get pressure on the quarterback. They need more of that. I think Quiddy Pay would be an upgrade there. Pair him with Max Crosby. And remember, guys like that can move around a bit, move inside at, you know, obvious pass rush situations where you can have more pass rushers on the field. So that makes sense there. Ravens go Terrace Marshall. Uh, I like him a lot before he opted out. Strong receiver, faster than get, faster than giving credit for. Um, you know, really improved going into this year, too, and that's without Joe Burrow. Uh, I liked what I saw. The last game he played there uh, was against a and I was liking what I was seeing. It felt like he was really carrying the offense there. So, um, I like, you know, he, he, he looks the part, too. You know, the way he's built, he has the combination of strength and, and speed. Again, faster in the open field than you think. Um, so this is kind of more, you know, Miles Boykin's a solid guy to have, but this is kind of the much, much better version of that to pair with Hollywood Brown. Um, even though he needs to pick it up as well. I kind of went somewhat bold. People will think this is bold. Washington football team, they still need a quarterback. A lot of the guys off the board, they could address this in free agency or draft or trade up in this scenario. Um, they could use another offense line, maybe a tackle. I wasn't really feeling the tackles for them around this 19 range, some of the good ones off the board. Uh, but they are no, they are a big time corner away from being a that even that much better on defense. You know their their pass rush is so good. They they need some tight coverage, playmaking corners back there. J.C. Horn's really good. Well worth this pick. This this one pick will make that defense, you know maybe the top defense in football. Uh, Cardinals take Levi Onuzerke uh, from Washington, a guy that's kind of growing him. He did opt out for this season, but he's a guy that just reads the ball. You know if he needs to blow by his. His, uh, his offense alignment there, he's going to do it, but he's really good at kind of mirroring the ball, whether it's quarterback, running back, and just not letting him buy him. He's a very smart defensive tackle that can move around the defensive line. They're not obviously not an edge rusher. Cardinals need more help up front. You know, it's been some time since the de- actual three front defensive line's been, um, you know, consistent, I suppose. So I would like that pick for them. Dolphins go Najee Harris. He had a huge game against Florida. You know, nothing that surprising because we know he's a good, really good running back. His vision is tremendous. He has a lot of strength. You know, you wish there was more speed, but he's pretty fast for his size. Um, but the vision really stands out. You know, and he can break tackles, can make people miss the vision at the next level as well. But, you know, what he did in that Florida game really boosted his stock, possibly made himself first rounder because what's everyone looking for in a running back? They want a complete running back, one that can catch the ball at a high level. Uh, for them to take him in the first round, and Harris did that. He, you know, he lined up in the slot at one point, made some big plays, He's catching the ball in the backfield like crazy. Downfield, of course, so that, that's that's a big upside there. Dolphins get two Bama guys for two at Vailoa. That looks pretty good there. Uh, Gregory Rousseau dropped quite a bit. This guy has tremendous upside. We were talking about him in the top five at one point. Opted out, didn't help, but didn't push him down a whole bunch. But now you see all these other Miami edge rushers kind of getting thrown in there, and they all look good. Like No matter who gets in there, they look good, so... Um, it's really not a reason to knock Rasu, but it makes it more of a risk, you know. Uh, but I do like him. You know, you've seen him at, at the edge rush position dominating. You see him at a three technique spot dominating. You see him at a nose tackle spot. I don't know if he'll play much nose in the NFL, but 
yeah, that's just a ball player, you know. So some team will probably fall in love with him. It is a little risky. Uh, the Buccaneers don't have a whole bunch of needs. Shaq Barrett off the franchise tag. Jason Pierre-Paul we got one more year after this. This year that's coming to an end. Um, he could be the next Jason Pierre-Paul for them. That's a possibility. I think I had this pick for a while. Jeremiah Wusu karamoa could very well be the best defensive player in college football right now. Browns need more speed. They also need a linebacker. You kind of get two for one here. You really get three for one because he can actually cover on third downs, covering the slot at a pretty high level. It's a playmaker at the same time. I just like this fit, and the Browns would love to have him. Kadarius Tony has been a guy that's been shooting up my board, having the first round for some time, but he continues to climb. The Colts add that speedster. He's more than a speedster, though. He's not just a speedster downfield or speedster for like a end around slips, you know, um, screen pass. You know, he can run the routes, he can run any routes, play in a slot, play outside, see him run around from the backfield, can catch any ball, can high point it. He, I, I like him a lot. You know, big, big game against Bama. Um, you, you know, he's the go-to guy a lot, even though Pitts can be at times too. Um, he's a big-time player. Looks like a first-round pick right now, total package guy. You know, I think of a guy like Henry Ruggs is, goes that early, and he's he's good. Got a lot of talent, a lot of upside. And I think a guy like Kadarius Tony would definitely go uh, first round. There might be more to his game. Uh, let me look at the last eight here. Jaguars go Davion Nixon from Iowa. He's he's really been uh, kind of an underrated our guy, really boosting his stock this year. Um, you know, playing across the interior defensive line, uh, getting pressure too. You expect him to stop a run, he gets a lot of pressure. The Jaguars definitely need something on the interior to pair with Josh Allen uh, and Clavon Chase on there. You know, they need more interior pressure to help those guys out. The Jets they haven't had edge rush in some time. Um, they get Joseph Asai, who would f- if they want to keep the current scheme would fit their scheme right there playing the 3-4 edge position he's had a pretty productive year uh, another Miami edge rusher that's really wasn't supposed to start going into the year uh, it was supposed to be Roche and Rousseau of course but Phillips kind of making a name for himself very productive uh, Titans need edge rush they cannot get the quarterback right now I know Clowney's hurt but it's a one-year deal uh, they need more of it anyways uh, Phillips would definitely help them. He definitely fits. So I view him as a three-four, and they got a current currently have a three-four defense. Wyatt Davis fell pretty far in this scenario. You see, it might be hard to see, but look at the scenario. It's very realistic. Uh, the Bills uh, could definitely add another guy in the interior there, a team that doesn't have a whole bunch of needs. You know, they could improve the running game. They could be in on Najee Harris if he's there. Perhaps that would be an upgrade big time. Uh, but in this scenario, I had him going Wyatt Davis. That's an upgrade that helps them. Uh, you know, maybe improve the running game if it's still Singletary and Moss, and then. Keep the interior protection there. Saints go Rashad Bateman, another Michael Thomas type receiver. That, that definitely can help him out. The receiver unit, you know, without Michael Thomas is not looking good right now. Another team that doesn't have a whole bunch of needs. Uh, that that may change though a little bit. They won't be able to pay, you know, a whole bunch of guys for the next year or so. But uh, yeah, they don't have a bunch of needs at the moment. Using another receiver like this. Uh, you know, to pair up Michael Thomas there for the Saints. Seahawks go Trey Smith. I believe I had this last time. Uh, Trey Smith is a. Uh, I think he's better than the 30, 30th overall player pick. Uh, however you want to say it. Uh, you know, he's a nasty blocker. You know, he can play tackle if you need him to as well. But I like him. You know, as a potential Pro Bowl guard. Seahawks can't get the run game going. They probably can improve at running back. Maybe a little, a little more speed back there. But they did draft McFarland for that. But obviously not like a true number one, a dominant number one. Um, but mainly the, the run blocking is pretty terrible right now. I think Smith will help on that. He's also a good pass protecting guard as well. Zaven Collins from Tulsa, small, somewhat small school. Tulsa is pretty good this year, though. Uh, but a, a guy that's really shooting up boards. It's a beast of a linebacker. Uh, I mean, I think you can go to either scheme. And the Packers could use him inside. And at times, you notice they, they take Zedaria Smith and they'll rush, the, who's an edge rusher, linebacker outside in their scheme. And they'll rush him from the inside. I think in those situations where he kind of pulls inside, Collins ha- has actually experience playing inside linebacker and then rushing from the outside as well as an off the ball linebacker. So I think that's a good fit. You know, a guy like Zedaria Smith and Zayvon Collins, even though they're really not the same position, but they can both play each other's position. Uh, we know the Packers need linebacker help there, you know, the non-pass rush kind, but Collins, that's a bonus to his game. It's a big dude, big dude, too. Tulsa is s- sneaky. They, they are one of the best defenses in the country, believe it or not. That defense is really good. Big reason for Zayvon Collins here. Uh, and the Chiefs go Alex Leatherwood. Uh, offense line doesn't feel the same as last year. Fisher's not playing that great, but they, they're gonna they're gonna. I talked about this in the past. They got, they're gonna make sure that Mahomes, the best player in football, their franchise piece, who is uh, under contract forever with all that money, is protected at the best as possible. You don't you don't want to have that gap. You don't want there to be a guy goes down and there's a disaster, or that guy leaves in free agency and they're and they're in a 
you know, they're they're trying to find a guy. You know, they don't want that to happen. They're gonna be they're gonna be smart about it. You know, it doesn't mean take a tackle. You know, if he's worthy of the pick, uh, Leatherwood could be their future left tackle there, very near future perhaps. He's doing a good job protecting for Mac Jones at a very high level right now. So that'd be a pretty solid pick. Um, that's my update of mock draft here. Uh, heading into week sixteen, we're now we're he- yeah we're heading into a few more weeks of football than playoffs, and we're heading into. Uh, bowl season and college football playoff season and then we can see uh, some of these prospects make a huge statement here coming up some big games for some of these guys so I can't wait for that and that will make more mock drafts along the way to see what changes and then insane amount of draft coverage in the off offseason um, check out this There's a, I'll put a link down below for this the cited app uh, I posted a poll on here go ahead and follow our page as well I'll put a link in the comments for this who should the Jets draft second overall it's a big debate right now because we know Trevor Lawrence is going one Maybe the Jets stick with Sam Darnold. Uh, I wouldn't agree with it, but maybe they do. Maybe that's what you think. They go somewhere else. Maybe they just want to get him more weapons, whether it's line or receiver. There's some really good receivers. Uh, and then the debate between if they go quarterback, Justin Fields and Zach Wilson. So very interesting stuff there. Uh, check it out. Vote. Once you vote, you could um, – let's see. Which is, I had him taking Zach Wilson, so I'll vote Zach Wilson. Then you can defend your side, and then you basically put Y, and then people can like um, – like your comment and then you get points and there's a leaderboard and you know, you know, the winners, um, you know, anybody that plays the top 10 on the leaderboard gets some kind of Amazon gift card. So pretty cool. Check it out. Uh, but that is going to do it for the updated mock draft for this week. Let me know your guys thoughts in the comments. Much appreciated. Really enjoyed doing this one. Uh, smash that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on so you don't miss a thing here. We got full NFL coverage. Uh, that's going to do it though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.